As we all know, hiking can be a wonderful way to spend some time in nature, get some exercise, clear your mind, or even spend time together as a family. Many hikers have an ingrained love of the great outdoors. However, in this community, we should know by now that things are not always what they seem. The mother nature can be a cruel mistress sometimes, especially if you aren't prepared when you roam into her territory. There are basic precautions you could take to make sure you aren't ever mentioned in one of these videos. But sometimes things happen all of a sudden or something will take place that was completely unavoidable. And this is where using your senses and keeping calm could come in handy and save your life. While the number changes from year to year, it isn't usually much more or less than about 2,000 hikers who get lost each and every year in the United States alone. It's often thought that one of the best ways to not get lost while hiking is to know how other hikers got lost to make sure you don't repeat their mistakes. According to many sources online, the number one way most hikers get lost is by straying off the designated trails. We must always keep in mind while out in the wilderness, especially when alone, just how easy it can be to get turned around and confused as to where you are. There is equipment you could use and things you could always do to ensure you're safe when out in the woods. And as always, we implore you to do your own research on these things so you can stay safe out there and get the best of what Mother Nature has to offer without inciting her wrath. Most of the time, lost hikers are found, either by search and rescue teams or even by finding their way back to civilization themselves. This could be either by chance, luck, or sheer wit and determination. But as we know all too well, too, some people do not come back. Some are found deceased, having fallen victim to the unforgiving landscape they had originally set out to explore and be at peace in. Today, we're going to discuss another set of hikers who were found. Some lucky and alive, and some tragically deceased, but found nonetheless which is more than many can say when speaking of a loved one who has gone missing in the wilderness. First up, Christian Farnsworth and Parker Jasmer. Christian Farnsworth and Parker Jasmer are two 19-year-olds who in late December of 2021 and into January of 2022 were missing in the snow-covered wilderness of Oregon for an entire week and were found alive and safe. The pair had gone camping near Swastika Mountain was so named because a rancher decades and decades ago had used the image of a swastika, at that time considered a good luck symbol, to brand his cattle. The pair left to go on their hike around Christmas time, but failed to return as expected on the 29th of December. The Lane County Sheriff's Office was contacted about the two missing teens and launched a ground search on New Year's Eve of 2021 when they still hadn't turned up. The ground search proved to be very difficult because of heavy snowfall in the area covering the mountain roads and making them impossible to traverse. This led to the sheriff's office calling in the Coast Guard for help, and the two young men were found very quickly after this. They were actually quite easy to spot as they had the presence of mind to write SOS in the freshly fallen snow, and this easily caught the attention of the rescue teams from the air. According to Coast Guard officials, neither of the teens needed any type of medical assistance and miraculously had survived completely unharmed for nearly an entire week in the snow-covered mountainous wilderness. Because they didn't require any hospitalization or even a visit to the nearest hospital at all, they were immediately flown to the Lane County Sheriff's Office in order for their identities to be confirmed. During the search for Christian and Parker, search and rescue teams located another pair of hikers in distress and were able to get them to safety unharmed as well. It's incredible. The Coast Guard got involved, and I heard that's rare, but I think they understood how dire the situation was, said Christian Farnsworth's mother, Katrina Crawford. I am so grateful to the Coast Guard. Lieutenant Maggie Champin, MH-65 aircraft commander from Sector North Bend, said of the two teens and their somewhat miraculous rescue, these young men did a lot of things right to give themselves the best chance of being rescued. By riding SOS in the snow, staying near their vehicle, and staying near logging roads, we were able to find them relatively quickly. We recommend hikers carry personal locator beacons while out in the backcountry. Next up, Dorothy K. Turner and Heidi Turner. Dorothy K. Turner and her daughter Heidi were said by family to have been driving an unusual route through Idaho when they left from Pendleton, Oregon, trying to get to Utah in late October of 2021. The mother and daughter were reported missing by family members on Wednesday, November 3rd, and they hadn't checked in via cell phone as they had been doing for most of the trip 
and were immediately considered missing and endangered. The police put out to be on the lookout for the pair and their vehicle, a gold 2015 Chrysler Town & Country with Oregon plates. A truck driver reported seeing a vehicle matching the description of Kay and Heidi's at a little stinker's truck stop near exit 13 on Interstate 84 near Payette on the morning of Friday, November 5th. At 11.45 a.m. that same morning, the Kootenai County Sheriff's Department received a call that a hunter had found a body in the Solitaire Saddle area of the Panhandle National Forest. Upon further investigation, authorities found a broken down vehicle nearby and inside was Heidi Turner. It was later confirmed that the body of the deceased was that of her mother, Dorothy Kay, and that she had died from exposure to the elements. Heidi explained that she and her mother were following an unfamiliar route due to relying on their GPS and ended up lost in the northern Idaho forest. Once the car had broken down and they could go no further, Dorothy left to go and try to find help and insisted Heidi stay behind in the vehicle so she wouldn't be exposed to the same elements, which ended up taking Dorothy's life in the end. Heidi had no idea her mother had passed away while searching for help and was expecting her to come back at some point. Next up, Jolly Bose. Jolly Bose, a 49-year-old woman from Palo Alto, California, became separated from her hiking group near Huntington Lake at a ridge east of White Bark Vista and Doozy Ersham Trail in the Sierra National Forest. She was reported missing by the group on Sunday, October 17, 2021. The Fresno County Sheriff's Office deployed 35 searchers, made up of both deputies and volunteers, helped find her in the snow-covered mountains, along with a search and rescue team that was said to have worked each day around the clock, trying to find her and bring her back out of the mountains safely. The sheriff also deployed several different resources to aid in the search, such as planes, drones, helicopters, horses, jeeps, and all-terrain vehicles. The agency also received assistance from Yosemite National Park, the California Office of Emergency Services, and the Marin County Sheriff's Office SAR team. The search area was more than 10,000 feet in elevation and was covered in snow and ice. Just about 48 hours later, and approximately 4.5 miles away from where she was last seen, Jolly was found alive and seemingly well. She was airlifted out of the area on Tuesday morning, October 19th. Jolly had braved five feet of snow, was still more falling, and weathered temperatures ranging from 13 to 19 degrees Fahrenheit during her ordeal. Despite this, however, she was unharmed and needed no medical assistance at all. John Fisk Berg. John Fisk Berg was staying at the La Quinta Hotel in Kanab, Utah, with approximately 50 other hikers and was last seen, before being reported as missing, on September 28, 2021, at around 7 in the morning, stating he was thinking about hiking the Canyon Overlook Trail. He was reported overdue the next day on the 29th by his fellow hikers. On the afternoon of Friday, October 1st, John was somewhat miraculously given his location, able to use his phone to not only call and leave a voicemail for his family, but also to call the Washington County 911 Dispatch Center. These phone calls, miraculous as they were, played a critical role in saving his life, as they were able to provide the search and rescue teams that had been deployed to find him important information as to his whereabouts. These calls are said to provide the insight needed to target specific areas of Zion National Park where he had gotten lost during his solo hike. On October 2nd, at approximately 3.30 p.m. Mountain Time, Nellis Air Force located John Fisk Berg above Lodge Canyon in Zion National Park. He had suffered minor injuries which were treated on the scene and was later transported to a nearby hospital for further treatment and evaluation. He made a full recovery. The Nellis Air Force Base, the Washington County Sheriff's Office Search and Rescue, drone teams and officer canine units were all credited with helping to find John and bring him out alive into safety. There were many more unnamed staff and volunteers who assisted in the search and rescue effort for John. The National Park Service Investigative Services Branch tip line was specifically mentioned by park rangers as being an integral part of the rescue mission as well. Next up, we have Jaron Fisher. 26-year-old Jaron Fisher was planning to hike alone from September 8th through September 12th, 2021. He was planning to camp in Shannon Valley Marmot Lake, Sundown Lake, and Camp Pleasant before taking the Graves Creek Trailhead back to his vehicle for the return trip home. A family member reported him as missing and the authorities began their search right away. They quickly found Jaron's vehicle still parked at the Graves Creek Trailhead and very quickly started searching for him in that area. 
The Park Service personnel reported that search and rescue teams hiked into the wilderness Thursday afternoon from the Graves Creek Trailhead towards Sundown Lake following Fisher's itinerary in reverse, as well as from the North Fork Skokomish Trail. The search efforts were slowed down by inclement weather, which was cold and windy with some rain. A week later, on Sunday, September 19th at around 8 p.m., Jared was found by helicopter deployed as a part of the initial search and rescue efforts and had to be hoisted from a ravine in the Olympic National Park, according to the U.S. Coast Guard. He was flown to the Olympic Regional Airport and then taken to a local hospital where, after surviving a harrowing week in the wilderness, he was reported to be in stable condition. Clifton Cliff Beck In September of 2021, a 66-year-old man named Clifton Beck, known to friends and family as Cliff, obtained a backcountry permit in order to spend two nights on the Wahala Plateau. Cliff left for his trip on a Friday and was therefore expected to exit the backcountry on Sunday, but he never came out of the woods. On Tuesday at around 9 p.m., Cliff was reported as overdue to park officials and his location was given as the Wahala Plateau on the canyon's north rim. The next day, an unsuccessful air search was launched and on Thursday, nine ground search teams and aerial searchers and helicopters were deployed to help look for Cliff. There were also a fixed wing aircraft in the area of the plateau. And at around 8.30 in the morning Friday, seven days after he had initially set out on his solo adventures in Grand Canyon National Park, Clifton Beck was found alive and seemingly well near Roosevelt Point on the north rim of the canyon. He was in stable condition and was transported by EMS to a local hospital where he made a full recovery. And last up, we have Teresa Bashara Cox. On Monday, October 30th, 2021, Teresa Bashara Cox was alone and planning to hike the Hawksbill Craig in the Ozarks National Park in Arkansas, United States. The Hawksbill Craig is also known as Whitaker's Point and is a popular place for hiking and photography. It's located approximately 90 minutes southeast of Fayetteville as one of the main highlights of the Ozark National Forest. Originally from Jasper, Teresa planned for this trip to only be a day hike, so when she hadn't returned home that night, she was reported as missing. Crews found her car still at the trailhead on the night of the 30th, which led everyone to believe that Teresa hadn't made it out of the park and was therefore possibly lost. She was not prepared to spend any length of time hiking or out in these woods in general. After finding nothing that night, search and rescue crews reconvened the next morning and began their search again. They searched the entire day, command center was set up in the nearby town of Kingston, but still there was no luck in locating Teresa. On Wednesday, after two whole nights had passed and still there was no sign of her, K-9 and aerial units joined the ground searchers. Also on Wednesday, sometime in the morning, two utility workers were working on a water line about a mile away from the trailhead near where Teresa's car was still sitting, where she had left it two days earlier. These two workers suddenly saw a woman walking toward them from out of the woods, and they helped lead her to safety. It was Teresa Bashara Cox. She later explained she had somehow gotten turned around in the fog and rough terrain and lost her way. Search and rescue teams reported to the media that Teresa went home that same Wednesday afternoon that she had been found and was okay after spending two whole nights out in the wilderness alone and completely unprepared. Well, folks, there you have it. What do you think of these stories of survival? I look forward to your comments, but please... Remember to keep it friendly and respectful. Till we meet again, take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you just a little farther on down the trail. I'm Steve Stockton, and I'll talk to you next time.